Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Automatron DLC for Fallout 4. My name's Camel, and in this video I will show you how to acquire the unique weapon, the Tesla Rifle, and also run through its various mods and how they work. To acquire this weapon, of course, you do need the Automatron DLC installed. Assuming the DLC is installed, we need to be on the quest headhunting. Once on that quest, we will be coming to the Fort Hagen Satellite Array, which is located in the Midwest barrier of the map. Come prepared for a huge fight as the inside and outside of Fort Hagen and satellite array are heavily populated with rust devils and robots. Once here, we need to come up onto this platform and use this terminal to activate the security door below. This will give us access to the hatch within, in which we need to enter. Make your way through the entire of Fort Hagen satellite array and the very last encounter is the encounter of interest. We will be fighting this lovely lady called Ivy and her incredibly powerful mechanical friend. Seriously, come well prepared, this is a pretty intense fight. Once Ivy has been defeated, on her body we will find the Tesla rifle, the very gun we came here for. On her body we will also find the unique Tesla T60 armor, which I will be running through in its own separate video, but for now just be sure to take it. So as always, before looking at the Tesla rifle's base stats, I have reduced all of my character's special attribute stats to 1. I also have no bobblehead perk or magazine effects applied to my character. What this means is we will be getting the absolute minimum base stats of the Tesla rifle. The Tesla rifle has 4 very different modifications we can apply to it. However, the fifth one, the reflex sights, I will be applying to all four variations. So the first barrel variation that we will be running through is the automatic barrel. Improves rate of fire, inferior damage, and range. So once applying it, we will have a tactical automatic Tesla rifle. Fires an electrical discharge that arcs between targets. It has a base electrical damage of 31. It uses the fusion cell as ammunition. Its fire rate is 90, its range is 83, its accuracy is 73, its weight is 10.4, and its value is 1. 116. With the automatic barrels modification applied to the Tesla rifle, it will have an ammunition capacity of 45. So the automatic barrels in use is kind of like a machine gun version of the Tesla rifle. As you can probably guess from the name, the automatic barrels make the Tesla rifle an automatic weapon, meaning its damage can be increased with the commando perk. Having automatic barrels will make you burn through ammunition rather quickly, and although it has inferior damage compared to some of the other modifications, it does fire, of course, very quickly, and the more shots fired, the more chance of arcing between targets. So not only is it great for taking out single targets, it's also pretty effective against groups of enemies that are standing close together. The automatic barrel modification is probably the easiest modification for the Tesla rifle. What I mean by that is it's quite player friendly. You don't need to be particularly tactical in your approach to using this mod. Just like me on Friday nights, it's more of a spray and pray approach to the Tesla rifle. <laughs> The next mod we will be looking at for the Tesla rifle is the charging barrel. Hold fire to charge. So once that's applied, we have a tactical Tesla rifle, fires an electrical discharge that arcs between targets. It has a base electrical damage of 110, it uses the fusion cells as ammunition, its fire rate is 36, its range is 95, its accuracy is 76, its weight is 8.8 .8, and its value is 132. Also, with the charging barrels applied to the Tesla rifle, it will have an ammunition capacity of 8. The charging barrels modification for the Tesla rifle are rather like the Gauss rifle. You can tap the trigger to fire off singular weaker shots or you can hold down the fire button to charge up a more powerful shot. Although unlike the Gauss rifle, the Tesla rifle does have a rather inferior range. It also only comes with one small scope modification option. So even if it did have the range, you wouldn't really be able to use it as a kind of sniper weapon. But anything from medium to short range, this charging barrels modification is that one hit wonder you have been looking for. And of course, it still has the arcing ability between enemies. In some instances, while using this modification, I was able to take out three enemies in one shot. This modification is much more ammunition friendly, as even a charged shot still uses only one ammunition. It's much more of a brain and aim than a spray and prey. And being non-automatic, its damage can be increased with the rifleman perk. The next modification we will be looking at is the charging shotgun barrel. Hold fire to charge, releases shotgun blast. Once the charging shotgun barrel is applied, tactical Tesla rifle fires an electrical discharge that arcs between targets. It has a base electrical damage of 130, it uses the fusion cells as ammunition, its fire rate is 36, its range is 71, its accuracy is 22, its weight is 10, and its value is 124. With the charging shotgun barrels applied, it has an ammunition capacity of 8. This modification is quite 
quite interesting, a shotgun energy weapon. The charging shotgun barrels are essentially a more wild and less accurate version of the charging barrels modification. Instead of releasing one super powered beam, which goes where you're pointing, it will release several super powered beams that don't go where you're pointing. Because it shoots several beams at once, it's almost guaranteed that it will arc between targets. And just like the charging barrels, you can hold down the fire button to charge up and prepare a huge, powerful load. Although the deduction in range and a poor excuse for an accuracy rating does make the charging shotgun barrels modification more of a short ranged choice for when you want to get up close and personal with your enemies. And the fourth and final modification is the charging lob barrel release electrified traps. Once they're applied, we have a tactical Tesla rifle fires an electrical discharge that arcs between targets. It has a base electrical damage of 110. It uses the fusion cells as ammunition. Its fire rate is 36, its range is 83, its accuracy is 22, its weight is 10, and its value is 128. With this modification applied, it has an ammunition capacity of eight and still only uses one ammunition per shot. Now I do have to say, this is one of the strange and most unique weapon modifications I have seen so far in Fallout 4. Rather like the charging shotgun barrels, you can charge up a huge, fearsome load and unleash your balls upon your enemy. Your lightning balls, of course. Delivering a massive dose of electrical damage. Or you can lob them at enemies. These lightning balls will stick to hard objects and irradiate a kind of AOE electrical damage effect. Any lightning balls that hit the target directly will deliver direct energy damage. However, unlike the charging shotgun barrels, any shots that miss will land on the ground around that enemy and emit an AOE effect. So this could be very useful to use against large groups of enemies, especially if there's a room where it's a tight squeeze and they can't escape the load of your balls. Outside of that, the charging lob barrels do have a huge arc, which does make it pretty good for fighting enemies below you. However, enemies on the same level or above you, you have to aim a fair way up to compensate for the arc of the lightning balls. Thankfully, however, inside VATS, it works. Unlike that piece of junk, the XB cannon from Fallout 3, which had a similar lobbing effect, in Fallout 4 with the charging lob barrels modification, this time it understands that the weapon has an arc and will compensate for that arc and actually hit your enemies. So although quite strange and quite unique, it's actually not that bad of a modification. It can be rather annoying trying to lob lightning balls at enemies that are out of medium range, but as we know, if you charge it up and you're quite close to an enemy, you can destroy them pretty much instantly. So the Tesla rifle overall is a very, very interesting weapon. It ranges from a short to medium ranged machine gun to a medium ranged non-scoped version of the Gauss rifle to a medium to short ranged energy shotgun to a short ranged ball lobbing machine. All of the modifications have their pros and cons. And I think in the order we viewed them is actually the order of easiest to use to hardest to use. The automatic barrels, super easy to use. You run in, spray and pray, hold down the trigger. And although you may burn through a lot of ammunition, you're pretty much guaranteed to wipe out whatever you're firing at. The charging barrels are a bit more tactical. You brain and aim, charge up a shot, take out what you want to take out with one bullet. The charging shotgun barrels, bit of a weird one. Because it's so wild, you do have to be pretty tactical with it. Especially due to its lack of accuracy, you really need to calculate your enemy's distance. And the charging lob barrels, very unique, very strange. It's something that definitely has potential, but it's going to take some getting used to. Overall, the Tesla rifle, very interesting weapon. I love that it has so many unique and plausible modification variations. One downside you do need to be careful of is the arcing effect. If you hit an enemy directly, it can arc onto a friendly target. I went into a building to save a hostage, shot the super mutant and killed the hostage at the same time. It was a shocking experience. After it happened, I was completely amped up, ready to shed some light on the Tesla rifle, as it is a current weapon. What's wrong, are they beginning to hurt? Now that you've had your end lightning, here it is, the Tesla rifle in action.
And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, there is my guide on how to acquire the Tesla rifle in the Automatron DLC for Fallout 4. As always, I've been Camel, and I do hope that this helped you in understanding the various modifications and their pros and cons. If you did enjoy this video and you would like to see other Fallout 4 guides, please feel free to click on the playlist button on screen. This, of course, will take you to my Fallout 4 guides playlist, where you can select the videos you wish to watch freely, or you can check in the description where it will be frequently updated with links to new Fallout 4 guides that I upload. Once again, I would like to thank you very much for watching, and I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there in a second.